This is a post I made in my Facebook study group last year and I would make a few minor adjustments now but we'll go over it and I'll explain a bit more in this video. Alright, Lucifer equals Prometheus equals Enki equals Enoch equals any deity or person who helps mankind by bringing them knowledge, wisdom, technology, etc. Could also be compared to the serpent in the Garden of Eden story in the Bible. God didn't want the humans to have knowledge, but the serpent knew that they needed to become conscious in order to have free will. Lucifer is not the devil and is simply a word used to describe light. Originally in Roman mythology, Lucifer was a title meaning light bearer or the morning star, which is Venus, the brightest and first visible star, planet, in the sky in the morning. Lucifer is also related to the Greek word phosphorus, also meaning light bringer, and not coincidentally, Phosphorus is used to start fires, like the heads of a match, which are made from the element. According to the myth of Prometheus, he was the creator of mankind and was in a major dispute with Zeus for teaching humans advanced skills like math, astronomy, navigation, metallurgy, etc. In return, Zeus hid the secret of fire, so Prometheus snuck up to Mount Olympus, lit a torch with the sun, and smuggled it back to give it to man. This, along with other events, led to the eventual opening of Pandora's box, which plagued mankind with all of its current problems. All right, here is a piece of artwork showing Prometheus holding the torch up to the sky, getting ready to bring it back down to man. Here's some comparisons between Prometheus and Lucifer. They were both blessed with great intelligence, saw great potential in mankind, both defied their God's authority, Prometheus was called the Firebringer. Lucifer was called the Lightbringer. Uh, both were severely punished by their gods. And humanity both suffered the wrath of their gods because of these figures' actions. Which basically means that, you know, through the process of uh, Lucifer, Prometheus, or any of the others bringing this consciousness or this knowledge to mankind eventually they misused the knowledge and you know it led to all the things that eventually uh, caused God to flood the earth or any of the things that the other cultures talk about their gods did to punish the humans alright so here's another one Lucifer means light bearer and morning star in pre-christian mythology he is called Shehar, Helel and Eosphorus or dawn bearer he is not the fallen angel or a name for the devil, but the morning aspect of the planet Venus. Venus is also personified as a goddess called Aphrodite in Greek. There is no need to fear Lucifer slash Venus. Okay, um, now this image of Prometheus here reminds me of a couple other things. I'll show you. The first here is this Columbia Movies company's logo and you just saw on that last image I showed you it said that Lucifer was also compared to Aphrodite or Venus so this is the female version and what else does this look exactly alike the Statue of Liberty now this will get off into all kind of conspiracy stuff and I'm not gonna get into that here but you can research it more or you can infer what you want to from all this it's not necessarily some evil Illuminati plan, but okay. Um, here is some stuff about the fallen angel Azazel from the book of Enoch, which is very similar to these other stories. In the book of Enoch, it says that the leader of the fallen angels was called Azazel, and he is often identified with Lucifer, the light bringer, or Lumiel, the light of God. He taught men to forge swords and make shields and breastplates, body armor. Azazel also taught them metallurgy and how to mine from the earth and use different metals. To the women, he taught the art of making bracelets, ornaments, rings, and necklaces from precious metals and stones. He also showed them how to beautify their eyelids with coal and the use of cosmetic tricks to attract and seduce the opposite sex. From these practices, Enoch says there came much godlessness and men and women committed fornication, were led astray, and became corrupt in their ways. So, just right here, we have that Azazel taught them metallurgy, which is the same thing I had in my post saying Prometheus taught the humans.
along with other advanced sciences. Uh, what else does that remind me of? Um, it says here to he taught them mining, and in the Sumerian story, the Anunnaki were created for what? To mine gold, and Ea or Enki was the one who was responsible for that. And let me show you here. Okay, Ea, which is also called Enki, is the creator and protector of humanity in the Babylonian flood myth Atrahasis and the Epic of Gilgamesh. He hatched a plan to create humans out of clay so that they could perform work for the gods. But the supreme god Enlil attempted to destroy Ea's newly created humans with a devastating flood because their never-ending noise prevented him from sleeping. But clever Ea foresaw Enlil's plan. He instructed a sage named Atrahasis to build an ark so that humanity could escape the destruction. Now what does that sound exactly alike? Noah's Ark and the flood story from the Bible. And um, what does it say? He created humans out of clay. I can't remember exactly which one right now, but there's another culture's mythology that says humans were molded from clay. It, it might be the Sumerian. I can't remember. But there's other ones that say very similar things. Um, you know, All these stories are basically exactly the same, and it just shows you how they all connect to one even older source mythology or perhaps even some kind of literal truth of some events that really happened. Uh, let's go back here to my post and read a couple of these first comments that give you a little bit more insight. All right, Eric here says the serpent that I was talking about, the serpent from the Bible who told Eve to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which ties right in also and, and led to all the things that humans ended up doing that angered God and he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and caused the flood and all that stuff. The serpent in the garden even had a name, Nakash. And then down here I say, I didn't know that. Look what I found related to that, Eric. Nakash, which I'm referring to, can be translated as serpent or snake, but has other meanings as well. The verb form means deceiver or diviner with divine knowledge. The adjective version means bronze or brazen with a bright shine. Therefore, used as an adjective, it should be translated as shining one. Shining or luminosity is a quality that is characteristic of divine beings in the Hebrew Bible and other Near East literature. So, um, Lucifer or the snake... Let's see, divine knowledge, it, it's all connected there. Go into a lot more, you know, minor details related. Some post on the Nagas. The Nakash he was talking about is related to the Nagas serpents of ancient times, the Brotherhood of the Snake, the Serpent People, which you may or may not know, but there's serpents all over the ancient world in artwork and mythologies and it's a very common theme. My friend Corinne, she makes a post linking Lucifer to Diana, which ties in with this Columbia Movies logo here and the Statue of Liberty. Excuse me. Some photos of ancient artwork of beings with serpents around them. And even all the way back to Egypt and older, there was lots of images of snakes being shown. So yeah, this just shows you how it's all tied in together. All these cultures have very similar myths. And you can take this much further and look into it and find some other correlations and see where it leads you to. But I just thought this was very interesting. And... One last thing here, where I say that it's, it's from the Greek word phosphorus, which is an element which uses, is used to start fires. Phosphorus in all of its forms creates light, and you can even put little bits of phosphorus into these tiny glass tubes, and either just by itself, or you can drop a little drop of a fluid, it will permanently glow and create a light, you know, as long as the element stays intact. You have phosphorus is an element in your blood, 
and in your body, which uh, ties into the fire element of things. You know, you have your four elements, fire, earth, air, water, which are in all parts of matter. Phosphorus ties into the fire element and is what helps to, you know, fire your body and transfer the energy throughout your blood. So this just goes deeper and deeper and... I don't know exactly, you know, what the ancient mythologies are referring to, whether it was literal events or if it's all symbolic and metaphorical or possibly all of the above, which is what I think about many things, especially in the Bible. Much of it can be literal or metaphorical and allegory. I just thought this was a very interesting subject, and feel free to look into it more or uh, post a comment on this video, ask me some questions, or... Come join my group on Facebook, Ancient Esoteric and Occult Wisdom, and you can learn more with us. Thanks.